We're going to have a look at the uh, repeater for the PRS group that's going to go on top of uh, the Brindoon Ranges and uh, we're looking into the cabinet from the front at the moment and uh, we've got a nice tidy cabinet here um, we've got our repeater at the top below that we've got um, two um, sets of filters and we'll have a look at these from the reverse side because they'll make more sense from the reverse side and we've got a power supply at the bottom and of course we're going to have um, a battery in the bottom now the the, the um, repeater itself that's it over there yeah. that's been donated by the the radio amateur club in Wangare. Yeah. and just give us a little bit of a rundown of what this repeater is obviously a Tate it's a Tate TB7100 it's actually made out of T Tate 2 Tate TM mobile radios so uh, there's, there's essentially two radios in the box but one is configured as the transmitter and one is configured as the receiver and Tate have actually built a, uh, a repeater um, interface um, and accessory board within this repeater box as well uh, that gives you the flexibility to configure it uh, for all sorts, of this particular repeater, for all sorts of purposes. Um, it could be could be used to transmit and receive data, for instance, um, or in this case, we've actually set it up as what we call a talk-through repeater. So whatever is received in the receiver gets rebroadcast out the transmitter. Right. The the repeater itself, out of the box, is capable of transmitting continuously 25 watts of RF power. However, for this situation, um, PRS licensing is such that we're not allowed to exceed a level of 13.2 dBW which is called the EIRP which is effective isotropic radiated power so if, if everybody's still with me by now and haven't, haven't, haven't rolling their, aren't rolling their eyes what that actually means is that we are not allowed to exceed a certain uh, transmit power output from the antennas to remain within our license so 13 so what we do is we work out the type of antennas we have and the gain that the antennas give us over a single uh, isotropic radiator that's the I in the EIRP and in this case it's actually five, uh, our antennas uh, exhibit 5.12 um, dB over an isotropic radiator so if we calculate backwards the different power levels at the point of the antenna and then at the other end of the coax cable that goes into the the equipment and then the losses uh, through the filters um, we can come up with a value that we can set the transmitter to the maximum value so that we actually don't exceed the license requirements and in this case high power is 17 watts that gives us our maximum output of 13.2 dbw and just for just for the hell of it i've actually given it a, a half power level of 8 watts as well so and that's using yeah the two buttons here. switches yeah the repeater yep. itself is programmed using a uh, a computer and in, in our case a laptop over here and uh, i've actually programmed these switches um, for a purpose one of them is test if you push the test button it it um, unsquelches the receiver and it turns the transmitter on for about 30 seconds so you can conduct a, just a, a local test the, the second button, F2, is actually used to turn the transmitter off so that if someone says, hey, you're causing interference on the site to other services, someone can come along and push the off button. The receiver will still remain active, but the transmitter will be turned off until such time as either the low or high button is pushed. And Very course, useful. Yeah. With respect to the users at the other end, what they have to do with their mobile gear is press the duplex button. Duplex button, button yep. So the DUP button on the on the radio. Forty channel radios will still work, but the the um, the speech level, which is also called deviation, is actually only half on it uh, on the eighty channels as it is to the forty. So what happens if you use a forty channel radio? The the speech level can be too high, and you will get cutting in and out of the repeater. So the repeater is really designed for the new eighty channel radio. Um, uh, radios. Ra gear, radio yeah. gear, yeah that's right. Let's yeah. swing this around and have a look at the other side Pete because there's, okay so we, we, we have two ports here. Yep. Uh, we've actually got a, a 12 volt input in actual fact and receiver and transmit port. Yep. 
So that that's the they are the two connections that we looked at before down on the filters. It goes to the filters. It yep. goes to the filters and we've got an earth connection over here. Yep. And that's yep. basically it. And the, the accessories board that I was referring to that take made for the repeater is actually here. We've got serial data that we can put in here to actually control the repeater if we want to remotely control a, a whole series of different channels if it's used in a different configuration. And we've got a system uh, connector here which we can actually put uh, uh, um, audio, remote audio from um, some other source into it and pull audio out of it. There's a whole lot of other remote control options that can be used. And we've got level setting here for that yeah, as well. Yeah, and we can set the levels correct yeah, as well. Yeah. This is the rear of the repeater. We've got uh, the transmit coming out this port on that side and the receive on this port here. And so if we follow this transmit lead round, we arrive at the, the um, circulator. There's a circulator in load there that provides us with isolation for any signals that come down the transmit aerial towards the gear. Uh, that can there on the end is our bandpass filter and these two cans over here Peter's actually modified them originally they were Deltec bandpass filter um, cans and they are now set up in a low pass configuration so we've actually got I'll just tip this camera down like that we've got a critical length there a critical length there and a critical length there and of course these are, um, all three of these actually are um, um, precision tuned. So there's three tuning knobs which are then locked up with the locking screws in the back here. Um, and that's where the transmit aerial goes onto there. And down at the bottom we've got a, again this is uh, going to be our receive aerial coming in here. That's a precision length, that's a precision length, and that's a precision length. And this is, these two uh, filters were, of course, bandpass filters. Pete's modified them and put them into a high-pass configuration. And then the last can here is, again, a receiver um, bandpass filter. These are, of course, delicately tuned, and these are precision lengths. And that's what the the, uh, the entire arrangement looks like when you look into it. The battery will go down the bottom. And that's an open frame switch mode power supply. Back. Open open frame switch mode power supply. That's up there. Yep. And you've you've got a couple of um, fuses and switches and uh, bits and pieces yet to wire on it. Top yet to wire up. Okay. So we had a discussion um, uh, about um, repeaters and the best way to accommodate them. Uh, of course, one of the issues we have here is we um, the, these um, cans are all delicately tuned, so you can't knock them around. Um, they're also uh, prone to detuning because of large shifts in temperature, um, and the enclosure also enables us to um, not only keep them secure. Um, but it enables us to keep small vermin out. Um, the nastiest small vermin, of course, is mice. And the little devils seem to get everywhere. Um, they love repeater gear because they find it nice and warm. And they'll sit on top of it and pee down across the top of the gear. Um, the other one which is quite nasty for repeater gear on, on a lot of sites is ants, believe it or not. Um, little ants can get inside this gear and, and and make a real mess. These actually look like um, vents but they're not. There's, um, they, used to be. they used to be vents but we've now enclosed them with um, plastic. plastic. I'll keep the little mices out, little messes, little devils. And of course we've got our plate down the back which will cover up this rear surface and close it completely.